Hats are clothing accessories that are generally used for enhancing one's style. Look at plenty of iconic video game characters. Those characters constantly have to fight evil, solve puzzles, or perform other actions where their hat is a mere accessory to help add to their iconic appearance or just help us remember who they are. However, do these hats actually help any of these video game characters complete their mission in the game? Mmm, sometimes. There have been hats that assist characters in other forms of media, so why not have a useful hat in a game where imagination can run wild? We've seen headgear such as knight's helmets be practical by providing protection in battle, but why not a hat that could be used for both style and utility? So that's why I'll be looking at the most useful hats in video games that can still be worn regularly, to an extent, to honor the characters that wear their hats with pride, and because they would likely not be able to survive, in a sense, without them. So now let's count down the top 10 most useful video game hats. Number 10 is Barbara's Helmet from Rayman Legends. Now this is a helmet which is generally used to protect the head rather than make a fashion statement. However, when Barbara gets hit in the head by an enemy in this game, she takes the same amount of damage that she would take if she was hit anywhere else on her body, which is not too armored up, so I'd say this helmet is mostly meant to enhance her barbarian motif. So yes, it is for style. Still, these wings on her helmet provide her with one simple, yet useful ability to her in Rayman Legends, flight. She is in a game where characters can just fly naturally, so when she needs to get around these steep ledges by floating gently to the ground, these stylish wings help her fly briefly. How? It's a video game, nothing needs to be explained. She practically flies when she uses her axe, so in some cases these wings are just for aesthetics. Number 9 is Wiz's hat from Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. He's the Wiz and nobody beats him. Actually, he's just Wiz, and Kirby beats him. Wiz has a typical magician's hat which makes random items appear at the tap of Wiz's magic wand. Some of these items include balloons and footballs. A bit random there, buddy. From a gameplay perspective, these give Kirby no abilities when he inhales them, so they are just random. And from Wiz's perspective, you're summoning items Kirby can just inhale and spit back out at you to damage you. Seems like you should be summoning items that tip the advantage in your favor. But hey, fair fight. However, some of these items actually do give Kirby useful abilities, so maybe it's not as fair as I think. Wiz is basically a tribute to all those magical top hats out there, which is something he has going on for him since he himself is not that hard to beat. Number 8 is Bleak's Hat from Donkey Kong Country 3. The first game where Dixie Kong was the number one main character, and the first game with Kitty Kong. Who doesn't love Kitty Kong? See? Dixie is thrilled to be working with Kitty Kong. But let's talk about the one wearing the hat here. Bleak the Snowman likely has the hat to thank for bringing him life since I can determine that he is some form of evil Frosty the Snowman based on his appearance. Even if that's not the case, his hat is a big part of his attack plan. When you meet him at Bleak's house, which might be a Charles Dickens reference, seems kind of random, he starts throwing snowballs at you to attack. C come on man. That, that's really annoying. I did not ask for a snowball fight. However, once you start hitting him, he goes to his next plan. Shooting snowballs out of his top hat like a cannon. I'm not sure if he could do this without the hat and the top hat just has a massive hole in the top, or if the hat is the one firing, but I'll assume he needs the hat for the cannon effect and for aiming. I really should not be analyzing the hat-related science of these one-off Nintendo villains. Let's just enjoy the fantasy. Number 7 is Big Top from Mario Party 8. Huh, that's the third top hat in a row. Big Top is the name of MC Ballyhoo's hat. MC Ballyhoo is the showrunner of Mario Party 8, and the face on Big Top is not a design. Big Top is actually alive. Big Top's main purpose is to assist the MC by giving out items, such as a plethora of coins, to help keep the Mario Party running. And you need as much help as you can get with that. Every time a Mario Party goes on, Bowser always tries to come in and ruin the party. He wasn't invited or something, so he's angry. Despite the fact this always happens, no one ever has a plan for it, and they just let him change the rules that overall still let everyone compete in the games. I know he's the antagonist of most Mario games, but you couldn't just invite him to the party to avoid this? I mean, look at some other scenarios. He's invited to go-kart with everyone and to go golfing. He clearly can act civil in a casual environment. Just take your hat and say, hey Bowser, want to join our fun and games? He has said yes in the past to other events, so what makes you think there's harm in asking? 
Number 6 is Wario's Hats in Wario Land for the Game Boy. Wario is a character who is not typically known for his hats, outside the standard Mario plumber design. But in this game, his power-ups came in the form of hats. The hats took a form representative of the attack or ability that would come in handy for Wario. My favorite may be the dragon hat since it allows Wario to spit fire out of the nose of the dragon's head on the hat. Now what does Mario get when his fire power is activated? A change of clothes? Heh, <laughs> I think Wario wins with the badass dragon hat here. Has Wario finally won against Mario in something? Eh, find out in a few choices. Number 5 is Eno's hat from Guilty Gear. Eno is a hard rocker with a living hat. That is no design, the hat is definitely alive. However, it does not help her out as much as you'd imagine for a fighting game. The hat looks like it has a few tricks up its figurative sleeve, mostly this undefined sorcery ball of green from its swirly dimension mouth. There's not much else revealed about the hat or why it's alive or even why it's a bit snarky. Since she summons random items related to sorcery and rock music, the hat may have part in how she summons these items. However, that is very presumptuous. Number 4 is Mario's Various Hats. Sorry, Wario. Mario did not typically see a change in hats when getting power-ups before Super Mario 64, where his power-ups primarily came in hat form. Look at the game box. They're advertising to you that you get a flying hat up front. There are three caps in this game that give Mario power-ups. The first one allows you to fly, as I just mentioned. The second one is the metal cap, which makes Mario metal. And the third one is the vanish cap, which makes Mario vanish. Not really. I can't get lazy with the description here. It actually allows Mario to phase through walls. However, there's a secret other reason why Mario's hat is useful and all-powerful. According to Toad in the DS version of Super Mario 64, if Mario loses his hat, he'll only have bad luck. Without Mario's hat, his life goes into a downward spiral, all because he is missing his headpiece. If that's the case, why'd you start wearing his hat, Toad? If you knew it was going to have such a bad effect on his life, why'd you do it? How would you like it if someone took your hat and started wearing it, even though that might actually just be part of your head since the late 80s, early 90s Mario cartoon has a lot of non-canon factors? What are you doing? Give him back his hat already! Number 3 is Ezlo from Legend of Zelda, the Minish Cap. In this game, Link, sans hat, finds a living hat named Ezlo that becomes his hat. This hat has the ability to shrink Link at specific locations with a magic spell to the size of the Minish race who are very, very tiny. Shrinking at specific locations does not seem like it gives you much of an advantage, especially since normal sized enemies now become more difficult to defeat, but in sheer coincidence, the villain of this game, Vadi, not only needs to be defeated with these powers, but he also used to be one of these Minish folk at one point. Good thing Link randomly found Ezlo during this time of need. To go deeper into this coincidence, Vadi knew Ezlo the hat before Ezlo was turned into a hat in the Minish world because Vadi put on this hat of evil, turned into the villain we all know in the game, and then turned Ezlo into the hat. Even more coincidental is that the hat is a perfect fit for Toon Link, that's Ezlo the hat to be more specific, and is the same shade of green as the rest of Link's outfit. How could this all happen at the same time? It's like a sitcom. And why does Ezlo as a hat look like a duck? He was a wise old looking wizard before he was turned into a hat. It seems like really specific dark magic to turn someone into a duck hat. I really enjoyed this game, but the plot elements introduced for the sake of gameplay in the main plot can get a bit silly. Also, while Ezlo was useful in defeating this specific villain, I can't see much of a use for him outside of this game unless you need to get into a really small place. However, you need those special platforms, but for the sake of this argument, let's pretend that the magical platforms will not always be exactly where they are needed. Huh. Well, Ezlo can also float like a parachute, so I guess that's another use. Number 2 is Kung Lao's Bladed Hat from Mortal Kombat. Now, I don't think I have to explain why a bladed hat is useful in combat. May I add a bladed hat that for some miraculous reason never accidentally harms Kung Lao, despite how often he has to touch it. I mean, you should get a minor cut once in a while. It's kind of funny that a peaceful Shaolin monk, one of the most pacifistic characters, is given one of the deadliest weapons. The use of Kung Lao's hat as a weapon was inspired by James Bond villain Oddjob, who also used his sharp-rimmed hat as a weapon. Kung Lao finds many creative ways to throw his hat, and how lethal it is seems very sporadic. 
Sometimes it just hits you, other times it spins on your body, and if he's having a really good day, or if you're having a really bad day, it can just cut through anything. It can also suspend someone in mid-air when thrown correctly, and be put in the ground as a buzzsaw. This is one hat. It only has one function, which is to cut, but he finds multiple creative ways to use that same function differently. When Kung Lao loses the hat, it will just come back to him, so it may be magic, or I may be overanalyzing game design again. Or maybe it's magic because in Mortal Kombat 2, he could pull a rabbit from it. Kung Lao needs this hat, not only for combat, but also it's what makes his appearance interesting. Without his hat, nothing really stands out about his design. However, he is still a great martial artist, so he can still fight, he just doesn't have his dangerous hat by his side. His martial arts styles are actually pretty cool, but his hat is what makes him, especially when he tilts his head just to the point where his eyes are covered by the hat. So basically, his fists are deadly weapons and his hat is a deadly weapon as well. They also gave him a sword during the 3D plane era of Mortal Kombat games, which was very redundant. On that random note, let's move to number one. For number one, I chose a hat that embodies all the aspects of the hats I've discussed so far. The hat is a weapon. It's alive. It can fly. But is it magic? It could be. It would require what perspective you want to explore that question from. Number one is vice versa. Cerebella's hat from Skullgirls. Cerebella is the only known person who can use vice versa, the living weapon hat. However, this is not what I would consider a weapon per se. It's more of a muscular assistant in the form of a hat that can do your fighting for you if you needed to. And since Skullgirls is a fighting game, yeah, you needed to. Cerebella herself is a circus performer who also acts as the muscle for the Medici family and their allies, who you can basically think of as the underground crime syndicate of Skullgirls. Despite that, Cerebella is actually a nice person. She doesn't exactly realize she's helping the wrong side. I mean, she kind of does, but I won't spoil the whole story. She's just gotta think. Vice Versa and Cerebella have a mental connection that allows them to work as a team without needing to physically or verbally communicate. Vice Versa knows when Cerebella needs him to attack, and he can think independently, while working in conjunction with her significantly weaker attacks. He's immensely strong, as exhibited by the move where he can turn a rock into a diamond with one punch! Can someone pull out the scientific numbers on the force that needs to be in that punch to make that happen, if physically possible? Now as a hat, this might not look convenient to carry around, but vice versa it actually stays compact, equating to the size of a typical hat when not being used. He expands into his full size when he's worn and ready for battle or just for entertainment. He contracts when the fight is over or when Cerebella blames him for the loss since, come on, he's the one doing all the fighting, she's just the mobility. Uh, Cerebella, uh... You know that stepping on him won't make him any better for the next match. Oh, okay, I'll just leave you there. Vice Versa can even spread out his arms to glide. You could say that he spread his wings and he learned how to fly. Okay, enough of that. Which is very handy, and that's not meant to be a pun. With Vice Versa, Cerebella has access to so many unique attacks that would not have been possible without the hat's help. Especially considering most of the attacks were actually just performed by the hat. In fact, Let's count the different attacks that can be performed either by the hat alone, or with the combination of the two. Alright, this is actually going to take longer than I thought if I do it this way, so let's just stop it here and say they have 18 plus attacks. But this game's only rated T for T- Alright, you get out of here. So with the power of this muscle hat that can still be worn as your typical hat, Cerebella's hat vice versa cements himself as the number one most useful hat in video games on this list. Are there any hats in video games that are quite useful that I missed talking about? Let me know. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.